scene is being held in accordance with the governor of Massachusetts' March 12th order, suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20. No public attendance will be permitted in person. Public can access the meeting via WebEx technology. No further notice, the phone can issue with your public comment at 30 days notice. News are also broadcast live on Burlington Cable TV usual. So the meeting and the telephone number for the meeting is 408-418-9388. Again, that's 408-418-9388. The meeting number or access code is 129-443-8800. And the access code is 129-443-8800. The meeting password is Tuesday. So with that, if I could ask everyone to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge to the flag of the United States of America. I will for the Thank you. So now on um, to the school committee reorganization. And as Rick mentioned, it's the first meeting after the town election. The school committee will first address its organization for the coming year, including the election of a chairman and vice representative for government affairs to serve as liaison members for the following school organizations. Assignments are listed below. So the first thing we should do is could I have a nomination for school committee chair? I can nominate Tom Smurphy, the chair. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Roll call or no? What's the chair vote like? <laughs> Six zero zero. Mr. Eric, Mr. Murphy, the gavel is yours. First off, I, I just like to acknowledge the So I'd like to also say that I, you know, I appreciate the work that the district has always done. How I, it, it, I, I, I feel a little sad because you're the one who picked Chuck Jenkins to get back. In person meetings, and he no longer is chair now that we have back in person. But um, thank you very much for getting all this done uh, this year. So, and you did get yeah. 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 there you go. Well, I'm happy to pass the gavel to Rick Smith for yeah. the great job. And I'd also like to congratulate Martha on the re election. I don't know if it's a good thing, but congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a pen to anyone who wants to. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, generally across the board, or across the ballot, congratulations to all the candidates who were successful in their elections. And for those who weren't successful, congratulations to you. And I am. Uh, 
people to be Lord of this world. Anyway, dress up now with the uh, annual uh, reorganization with our various media assignments. A whole bunch of them. And typically, what we do is if anybody has any mission, or wants to, or something that they kind of talking about, but they Apparently, a part of us is the, the current committee assignments, the subcommittee assignments. And, uh, we haven't gotten an opportunity to talk to anybody to see if anybody wants to change out of it. So, uh, so I have a couple of uh, questions. And uh, first of all, um, the D-Line advisory, it says it's not limited, and I doesn't exist anymore, so I was thinking we should just not announce it. So that's a suggestion. I don't know if we have to make motions for this or not. Okay. Um, we also um, have the Master Plan Steering Committee, which is no longer in existence, so we can cross that one off. I think at some point there may be a Master Plan Implementation Committee that we can deal with that in one place. I don't think we need that. And finally, the um, effort. Find that there's a purpose for a school committee subcommittee on equity, then we could reinstate it. But at this point, it feels like it's not um, a valuable tool for us to use. So, um, the first two, I think there weren't any questions, but I don't know if people want to make a comment on that or if we just would agree that we'll, I don't know what the right legal word is, but close that subcommittee for now. Um, so, um, anybody have any input on that? Or um, I think Eric's question about this will be uh, yeah. Uh, but again, I I was thinking if there was going to be a uh, community committee, then you would have school committee representation on the community committee. But it may be premature, as Ms. Simon had said. Okay. And so um, I'm, I'm not even sure we need to suspend or just not nominate anyone, but we don't want to be a subcommittee to participate in it. So, so I think um, once we start making more progress in that area, I think it would be well established as a uh, sort of a, a inter general government school yes. type of committee. That and I think good. that would be. So I, I would like to suggest that we strike it from the list and then at the point where we understand what the purpose of it would be, we could reinstate sure. it. I think that's great. And I do have a couple other questions. Um, so another question I have is maybe something we don't need to talk about tonight, but you know, I've been looking, reviewing this list every year since I've been on the committee, and there, it's now not clear to me what they all are. So, like, number, some of them are listed as a subcommittee, subcommittee to the Board of Selectmen, subcommittee to the Ways and Means, subcommittee to the Board of Health, etc. And by being a subcommittee, it has certain legal responsibilities about hosting and public meetings. But we have other things, such as recreation commission, such as the legislative contract subcommittee, such as audit subcommittee, which has what you know, what I want to say subcommittee. Um, I'm representing, I'm a liaison to the Burlington Youth and Family Services. So I, this list to me is not clear. What is a liaison? What is a subcommittee? Which ones are which? And what are the legal uh, responsibilities for each category? So I don't think we need to do it now, but I want to raise that issue and perhaps revisit this in a month 
if, if you can think about it, um, and I just read things. If, if it doesn't say subcommittee, does that mean it's a liaison? Does anyone know the answer to that? Um, I, I got well, Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry, but yeah. I think you can double check that. I think the subcommittee is going to be um, requested or, or designed by the school committee. And um, liaison may actually be a request by the other board okay. for a school committee representative. So we wouldn't tell them that they need a subcommittee. They might say we'd like a liaison. So yeah. we would sort of follow their lead. I love so it. I think that might be one of the distinctions. I think the subcommittees are all generated from this, uh, from this committee. But uh, we, we can, uh, at a future meeting, Sharon, can put sort of the legal definition of what a subcommittee is. And for example, I, Mr. Murphy has been on this list for the Recreation Commission, and I I used to think, well, is he also on this Recreation Commission? <laughs> Are you a member of the Recreation Commission? I am. And well, so, well, how, what is how does that? You know, you don't have to get into all the details, but if you want to explain the point. Well, the, the subcommittee is, in my understanding. And there's a couple of exceptions that kind of here, but most of them are uh, uh, related to existing boards. Uh -huh. um, and on occasion, uh -huh. some more than others, it's necessary for us to meet with them to discuss mm -hmm. whatever the issue of the day right. might be. So by having a subcommittee, they are then empowered to go to, for instance, a board of health meeting if there's something on the board of health agenda that's school related mm -hmm. and they want mm -hmm. somebody there. Mm -hmm. Um, I think we probably, out of habit more than anything else, appointed a subcommittee for the Recreation Commission, even though we have a member of our committee that's a designated member of the Recreation Commission. So you're not a liaison to the Recreation Commission, no, you're I, I, a member? <coughs> there, there's a, uh, the planning board and the, and the schools committee each have one designated person that becomes a member of the Recreation Commission. Mm, okay. So they have three elected members and two appointed members. Oh, okay. So we also have apparently a subcommittee to consult with the members. Yes, which there's also a subcommittee. Which results in me sub, uh, uh, meeting with myself on occasion to, uh -huh. <laughs> to discuss. And <laughs> then every time you go to a meeting, it has to be posted because you're well, in the forum of a subcommittee. No, because, well, if, if both members of the subcommittee were going to attend to a, mm -hmm. an event, then I think the rule is that it would mm -hmm. have to be posted. Mm. My, my going to a recreation committee meeting, I'm a, I'm a member of the recreation committee. So right, so that wouldn't, mm -hmm. that would, you're posted, it's posted, posted as a recreation. Yeah. So I'd like us to get some clarification. Sure. Yeah, and, and, and probably, I mean, these are things that, I, as long as I've been doing it, that the same mm -hmm. list has been rubber stamped for going on 100 years, so. And we may want to continue doing yeah. it the way that way, but I just would like to understand yeah, no, the it's process it's better. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. So, um, and I also, so other than deleting those three that I mentioned, um, I'm happy to stay on the committees I'm on now, um, but if other people are interested in sure. other ones, I'd be interested in hearing about that. Anybody interested in changing anything or interested in moving to something different? No? All right. <coughs> I will read through the list just for the record then to see who's going to be on the various subcommittees. Um, and then at the end, we can just vote once to, to, re, to reappoint. Okay. So for the Recreation Commission, I'm the designated school committee member of the Recreation Commission. <coughs> we have two members serve on the Academic Review Board uh, that currently is Martha and myself. Two members to serve on the Six Lees Bank Committee of the Burlington Education Association. That's the superintendent and one member of the school committee. So currently that's the superintendent and Christine. Yes. One member to serve on the Six Lees Bank Committee of the Burlington School Administrators. That's Martha. A legislative contact person to the Mass Association of School Committees. That's Carl and Catherine. Um, Chapter 70, 766 Parent Advisory Committee, that's Christine and Catherine. We're going to omit the Beeline ad Advisory Board as no longer being required. Uh, we've got a subcommittee of the Board of Selectmen, that's currently Christine and myself. 
Subcommittee of the Ways and Means is Christine and myself. Subcommittee of the Board of Health is Carl and Martha. Subcommittee of the Recreation Committee is Catherine and myself. Subcommittee of the Planning Board is Carl and myself. Subcommittee for Wellness is Martha and Christine, and the alternate is the superintendent. Subcommittee for Transportation is Catherine and Christine, with the superintendent as the alternate. The Audit Subcommittee is me. Uh, we assign representatives to the various PTOs across the board. For Fox Hill, it's Catherine and Christine as the alternate. For Memorial School, it's Carl with Martha the alternate. Pine Glen is myself with Christine as an alternate. Francis Ryman is Christine, and I'm the alternate. Marshall Simons is Martha, and Catherine is the alternate. The high school is Carl with Christine as the alternate, and the DECC is Christine. Mm -hmm. The Burlington Youth and Family Services um, liaison is Martha. We're omitting the Master Plan Steering Committee. Uh, the Disability Access Commission is Martha and Christine, and we're omitting the Equity Committee. So. If there are any questions or comments, let me know. I actually have two okay. more questions, if I could. Yeah. Um, I had uh, overlooked um, the Chapter 766 Parent Advisory Committee. The Chapter 766 hasn't been used in 20 years, and I was wondering if we could rename that committee to uh, be the, uh, again, uh, it's the liaison to, I assume. It, so the liaison to the Burlington CPAC or Special Education Parent Advisory Committee. So I'd like to propose that we rename that uh, to name it what the committee is calling itself. Sure. Do we need to, you know, just put it in before we vote on it? Is uh, well, I think you just did. Okay. And then we'll, um, we can arrange the records later on. <laughs> Thank you. So that would say Burlington CPAC because you don't need to read the PAC part is the Parent Advisory Committee. Right. Or it could be written out either way. And my other question is, after we have a conversation about this, am I correct that we could reorganize again? Uh, we don't have to keep them the way yeah. they are now. We could sure. decide that Ms. Bond wanted to be on one of my committees and I wanted to be on some other, okay. This is always a fluid thing. I mean, at some point we, depending on how things go, we might have an, another building committee to appoint. Yeah. So there's always things that kind of come okay. and go. Good, thank you. Those are my questions. All right, so if there's nothing further, I'm gonna put the uh, 2020 to 21 uh, subcommittee and liaison assignments to a vote. As previously read, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Um, that passes five zero zero. Now we have a few other appointments um, that have to be made individually. Uh, the first one is the school committee designee for the lab collaborative and historically that's been the superintendent. I move we approve uh, the Lab Collaborative School Committee designee to be Dr. Conti. I second that. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That's approved by zero, zero. Second one is the Central Office Sexual Harassment Complaint Management Facilitators. And uh, that has historically been the Human Resource Director and the Assistant Superintendent, Mr. Larkin. I move that we appoint Mr. Larkin and Jillian Faust, Human Resources Person, as the Central Office Sexual Harassment Complaint Management Facilitators. I second that. Moved and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That also passes 5-0-0. The third position is the coordinator for non-discrimination compliance including civil rights in Title IX, and that's uh, currently the Human Resource Director and the Assistant Superintendent Larkin. I move that we appoint the Human Resource Director, Joanne Faust, and Patrick Larkin as the coordinators for non-discrimination compliance, including civil rights in Title IX. I'll second it. And I have a question on that. Sure. Um, it was my understanding that the Special Education Director was perhaps one of these coordinators, Dr. Conti, do you have any memory of that being true in the past or did I remember it wrong? Um, it might have been that way in the past. But um, it was before we had um, Joanne Faust. Uh, 
Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Seeing nothing further, all in favor of that appointment, uh, please say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes 5 0 0. The fourth appointment is the school committee secretary, uh, Sharon Gilbert. I move we appoint Sharon Gilbert the school committee secretary for a term of 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> You need to do another 20. <laughs> Except for the 20 year part, is there a second? I'll second. Okay, moved and seconded to appoint Sharon as the school committee secretary. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that also passes unanimously. All right, moving along. Uh, approval of the minutes of April 13th, 2021 school committee meeting. Is there so a motion? So moved. I'm sorry, that is March 23rd. March 23rd, March 23rd yeah. Oh. Uh, okay, I was just looking at the agenda. I'm sorry, uh, the March 23rd, 2021 school committee meeting. So moved. I'll second. Any questions or discussions on that? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? That passes 5 0 0. Do you have anyone? Uh, looks like we don't have the 13th in here, Sharon. That's tonight. Oh, okay. Oh. Sorry, I just I think <laughs> I, I um, We're all getting used to this in person thing. Approval of the warrants. Um, is there a motion to so approve moved. the warrants? I'll so second. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes 5 0 0. Uh, next up is public participation. If there uh, is anybody in the remote audience who has something to say or has a comment to make on something that's not otherwise on the agenda, um, now is the time and I'm going to look to Mr. Kuna to assist me in seeing any raised hands. Through the chair, um, no one has raised hands right now, but could I just make a recommendation please if everyone could speak a little bit closer to the mic I've received a few messages that it's a little bit hard to hear. Um, and especially when people are talking, it's tough for audience members to distinguish who is talking. So I don't know how we would address that, but at least if we can speak closer to the mic, uh, it would help the audience at home. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Okay, good. Um, okay, seeing no public participation, uh, we're going to move on to information and reports. The student representative. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Just before I, I introduce uh, Sarah, um, I want to make sure that I recognize Sarah for her efforts. I think Sarah came with a group of students here two years ago in front of the committee and um, asked that the district uh, hire someone with a focus on diversity, equity, uh, and inclusion. And um, I was not able to meet that request um, over the next two years. And the students didn't take no for an answer. And they um, worked collaboratively with uh, people in the district. They came back to the committee. I think they um, had some uh, parent support, some community support, and uh, ultimately resulted in um, getting this uh, position funded through town meeting. and. Um, we're um, able to have Sarah introduce our new Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion to the committee tonight. So I want to make sure I recognize Sarah. And Sarah represents many students. So again, I think Sarah had a leading role, but I think there are many student voices who were included here, which is really uh, why I wanted Sarah to make the introduction to the committee. And I would also be remiss to not recognize Mr. Larkin, who has put in a tremendous amount of hours organizing the, uh, the entire search process. and. Um, really making it uh, fully inclusive and the feedback that we got um, from um, all of the candidates where they were very impressed with the organization of the process, the questions and the thoroughness of, um, of, of the presentation and I think making sure Burlington is represented well as we're trying to attract people of Mr. Porch's talent, I think that is something that was really important and Patrick did a, did a great job. I know he won't take credit for it but he, uh, he was um, he was really uh, working closely. So 
Uh, with that, again, Sarah, I wanted to make sure I, I um, acknowledged uh, your work. So uh, the student report, um, Sarah Shade. Thank you so much. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, I was wondering, should I do like the introductions first or should I do like my report first? Sarah, you can make that decision right now and we'll support either one. What do you want to do? Um, I guess I can do the report first and then I'll do the introduction. Just Perfect. so we get the report over with. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so, uh, well, first thing that I wanted to address um, as part of the report is that today is the first day of Ramadan and I kind of just broke up the fast like two seconds ago. Um, during this meeting, and um, I, I just wanted to tell, like, I guess the committee and the school community, like, in general, um, who's watching this meeting, that, um, like, Ramadan has started, um, us Muslims fast for 30 days straight um, from sunrise to sunset. Um, it's one of our pillars of Islam, something that all of us Muslims strive to abide by, um, and during this time, we kind of reflect on ourselves and our purity, our intentions, and kind of try to empathize with others as we fast every single day and continue to pray. So, um, as always, like through COVID, um, our journey or our experience celebrating Ramadan is very different, especially when we can't go into the mosque, um, the Islamic Center of Burlington, as much as we would like to um, and we cannot pray with a lot of our like family members um, and things like that. So I just wanted to say and kind of wish everybody who's celebrating Ramadan Karim and Ramadan Mubarak um, to those who are celebrating. And I'm hopeful that we'll have a safe and a blessed Ramadan month. Um, so just wanted to put that out there. Um, the second thing that I would talk about was um, kind of like the senior class in general. So um, the senior student council and the exec board have been trying to pull some sort of event off um, at the end of the year before graduation and all of the formal um, formal events, I would say. Um, and I was very hopeful that we would get to have some sort of a prom type of situation. But obviously, because of the increase in the COVID cases and the guidelines provided by DESI, uh, we won't be able to have like a prom event that we even hoped to have. Um, and obviously, it's very saddening and disheartening to hear. But um, but the student council and the exec board, we're all trying to plan at least something else that we can do as a club. Um, so we did send out like a survey out to the entire class this week, which is due on Friday to kind of generate um, like any additional ideas that people have and also make sure that if we have some sort of event that people feel safe to attend it. Um, I know that that was a concern for a lot of students too. So, um, so all of that is a work in progress right now. Um, Another thing that's happening with seniors is that we're all committing to colleges and our future plans. Um, so you can actually go to our in to um, the Instagram account VHS Sendoffs 2021, where you can see um, where each student is going after graduating VHS. Um, so that's really exciting. That's happening in the next week or so. Um, the senior internships are starting on the third. Um, which I did mention before, and as Dr. Conti basically announced and um, told everybody that the full return to the school, which was supposed to happen the week after April vacation, will now be extended to May 3rd, which means that a senior class, those who are going on internships, will not be able to attend class um, fully in person with all cohorts like together um and i did say this in the past meetings and so that like i really like we all really wanted or we, we all really looked forward to that um because we have been split up in cohorts throughout the entire year and we hope to have at least that one week where we were all together but um 
obviously we know that COVID hasn't gone away and we understand the guidelines um, that Desi and CDC and everybody has provided. So um, I guess we're just excited to go on our internships and those who will be in the building will be um, part of like the full return. And when it comes to the freshman student council, um, they had to cancel their nothing but cakes fundraiser. So they're looking for different for different like alternatives to do instead. Um, the junior student council actually had a true north fundraiser last week, I think. Um, and that was a success. So um, there's that. And I think I think that is it for my report. Um, if anybody has any questions or any comments before I do the introductions. Uh, Sarah, I just wanted to say I'm, I'm sorry that you're missing that week together. It just uh, the numbers didn't look positive. So uh, again, I, I, again, I apologize for that. So um, I feel very honored <laughs> to be um, here and to introduce you to Mr. Raymond Porch, who will be our director of diversity, equity, and inclusion in the Burlington Public Schools. Um, cheers to that. <laughs> um, it was a process, as Dr. Conti mentioned, since the past two years, and I would also say it has been continuing since many years before then. Uh, there have been a lot of teachers who have been part of this process, and I want to commend each one of them who have um, supported us students and encouraged us to make this happen. And the fact that I get to introduce him today is huge for me. <laughs> um, um, so when I when we talk about like how um, the director of DI was hired, um, we had amazing applicants. We had like 46 applicants and um, I was part of the first round, like first like screening slash interview committee. And I was very fortunate to be part of the process and pick our three finalists, one of them being Mr. Porsche. And um, he stood out to all of us um, through his experience, through his charisma, through the interview. Um, <laughs> and um, and we were really excited to have, have him be like one of the finalists. And um, as a finalist, he met with the three stakeholder groups, students, teachers, and um, parents. And one of the the student group, which I was also part of, um, we really, really, really enjoyed speaking with him for that four to five minute period that we had. Um, as far as like us, all of us students who were in the stakeholder group felt, um, we thought that he was super um, engaging and he made sure to listen to each one of us and have like active discussions throughout the interview. Um, he made sure that our voice was heard and appreciated. And that's something that I think we all, all of us students want to see um, throughout the entire school system. Um, we also thought that uh, he kind of treated like students as equals and equal partners, which obviously benefits us um, as we want to be able to say, like we want to see this change and work with the adults to create that change. Um, and he made us feel very comfortable with him to share our thoughts and ideas on different topics. Uh, and as the press release um, stated, um, he has a lot of experience in secondary and post-secondary education, um, specifically in like public, charter and private schools. Um, and he was the director of school climate, culture and equity cultural response of teaching and learning before he accepted this position here. Um, and I think he, he's going to bring a lot of um, value and a lot of interesting things into our district. And um, I was really glad to be one of the students who met him um, last week uh, when he came in to sign his contract and we filmed TikTok videos that you might have seen on Twitter and Instagram. And it was a very fun experience for all of us. And I think when I talk about from all students, I think we really appreciated the, the fact that we were all so involved in this entire process and the fact that we felt like we were heard and appreciated. So 
um, welcome with the first to Frankie Public Schools. And I don't know who's gonna go next, but I think I know that Martha Duffield, she wanted to give an introduction to. Um, Sarah, Sarah, why don't we just introduce Ray to the committee first and then we can take comments after. So Mr. Porch, are you um, welcome? Mm -hmm. And I'll introduce you to the Burlington School Committee members. Uh, there he thank is. you so much. Um, Sarah, you are, you thoroughly embarrassed me here. So I the thank you for doing that. Um, those young people are fantastic, first and foremost. Um, I, I'd like to, to open with, um, you folks have been fortunate um, in that you've developed these young people to advocate for themselves in a way that is powerful and dynamic. Um, our young people have a wonderful way of being resilient and really being committed. And sometimes um, in our haste and in our work, um, we, do, we, we, we can underappreciate. And I say we collectively, you know, like where we are, right? Um, and so clearly in Burlington, that has been something that's been a focus. It's been an asset. And so I commend you all for putting in that effort um, to partnership with your, your young people because they were fantastic. The interview process was fantastic. I really enjoyed uh, what I learned about the school district, what I learned about the educators, what I learned about leadership um, in the district, as well as uh, just culminating with spending time with some amazing young people who I am looking forward to um, being for being being present when they commence, whatever that looks like, celebrating their success and and also staying remaining a, a an ear for them to bend in any way you know support them in any way that I can. Um, that said, I am excited uh, about this opportunity. Um, I look forward to working with with this this group um, and with this school district and and with with, with Dr. Conti and and Patrick. They've been ter terrific to to kind of collaborate with and work with. Um, everybody's been very welcoming. Um, I think the work that, you know, this district has decided to embark on with this work uh, is really important work. Um, we're all going through this experience in these days and times around social justice and voice and making sure that we are, you know, in lockstep with policies that make sense that are equitable for folks to, to, to feel a part, as Dr. Conti would say, um, of the community. And I look forward to working with the educators in the district, the students, the parents. Um, I'm looking forward to getting getting going and listening to folks and hearing their perspectives and thoughts and ideas and suggestions. I'm a big fan of, of collaboration and co-constructing. Um, I, and, I, and I hope to add value to the wonderful things that are happening um, in the short term as well as in the long term and, and hope to you know bring some, some energy in, in different ways and, and um, you know, be a listener in, in some spaces and, and really kind of help us move forward together and do really good work for our young people and for our, for our Burlington school community as a whole. So I, I really appreciate the opportunity and um, um, I thank everybody who was a part of the process uh, as well as Dr. Conti and, and uh, Mr. Larkin. Thank you very much. Um, I wanna make sure I give the school committee a chance to welcome you um, individually. So, uh, Mr. Chair, I'm not sure if you want to. Um, um, yes, uh, before I do, I just, uh, I'm getting a message that we're having a problem with our audio. Um, I think it's fixed. Um, Is it fixed now? Well, Mr. Porsche, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. At right. the beginning of our meeting, nobody could hear because DCAT didn't know we were having a live meeting and Brad took care of it. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> Okay. Of course he did. So. On his birthday, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So we're, we're back on track. Um, comments, questions? And again, Max? if you could please introduce yourselves as well. And Mr. Porch, you'll meet everyone without a mask at some point, so it'll be better to put faces with names. But uh, um, certainly we can, um, again, I'd like for many to introduce themselves to, to Mr. Porch. Hi, Mr. Sorry. Hi, Mr. Porch. My name is Carl Frost. Just want to say welcome, and I'm excited to work with you. Nice to meet you, Carl. Hi, uh, my name is Martha Simon, and I want to welcome you, and I'm just delighted that you're on board and that you found somebody with the kind of experience and skill that you bring to us. Um, I'm, 
I'm just, I mean, hearing, as you know, hearing Sarah speak about this process, I, I was, I'm just really moved and um, appreciative of these students like Sarah who have worked for numbers of years uh, to, to have us get to this point where we could hire a someone in this position and someone as great as you. We hope, well, we're expecting, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. um, I also think that um, what Sarah didn't say and what Dr. Conti didn't say is that a lot of the students and, and teachers have been working on requesting not just a director of equity, uh, direc diver diversity, equity, and inclusion, but a number of other action items. And I keep looking over there because that's where Mr. Porch's picture is, but I think I'm supposed to look over there. But um, there are other action items that our teachers have been working on, that our students have been working on, that our administrators have been working on, and um, we are in process, which is really exciting, but I'm just really pleased that we'll be able to move forward in a much more, uh, I think, positive, productive way. Um, I love that you want to collaborate because I think there are a lot of people in the district who want to collaborate on these issues. Um, uh, I also want to thank the, the hiring committee, all of the people on the hiring committee, as well as the students, Mr. Larkin and um, everyone who put effort into making this happen. I want to thank the town uh, for approving the position so we could do this hiring process now so that you can start on board on July 1st. Um, that's really uh, going to give us a real head start, I think. And I look forward to working together to move our district forward uh, toward more equity and belonging for everybody. So thank you. Thank you, Monica. I hope you are. Hi, Mr. Porch. I'm Chris Monaco. And I'm very happy to meet you. And I look forward to getting to know you in person. <laughs> Thank you so much, Chris, as do I. I'm looking forward to it as well. Oh, my turn. <laughs> it's nice to see you again. Uh, I was able to participate in part of that uh, interview process. And um, I think we uh, made a really good choice. I um, and Catherine Bond. <laughs> I had to reintroduce myself, I guess. Um, and I do look forward to working with you and collaborating and welcome aboard and, um, you know, best to you and, and I, I have all the confidence in the world. Thank you so much. It's good to see you. Murphy, um, I've been on the school committee for quite a while and um, this position I think has been a long time coming and so like everybody else I'm looking forward to working with you. Uh, I welcome you to Burlington. Uh, look forward to meeting with you personally as we move forward and uh, I hope you enjoy your, your stay here with us. So uh, on behalf of the committee, thank you for joining us. Congratulations on get, getting the position and we all look forward to working with you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, Mr. Chair, I'm not sure. Oh, uh, was Ms. Duffield? If you uh, want to open it up now for other comments. Yeah. Um, I believe it was Martha Duffield had, had a comment. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Porch, welcome. Um, I don't know if you remember, but I was on the Parent Hiring Committee. Um, my name is Martha Duffield, and I really enjoyed meeting you in the interview. I was very impressed with your um, skills, and um, you know, on a personal level, I have two biracial children, and you know, it really means so much to, for me to have somebody in your role that they can go to and will be a safe person for them. Um, and then on a community level, I'm the president of Burlington Against Racism, and we're a community-based organization that works on anti-racist policy. And we're just really excited to work together and support you in this role, so thank you. Well, thank you so much, and of course, I, I remember you quite well. So I, I'm th glad you could be here tonight, and I appreciate all the efforts that you've put in to grow this community. So I'm looking forward to working with you as well. Excellent. Thank you. See? Okay, Mr. Porch, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, on a Tuesday evening. Um, we appreciate it. I think we're going to get you out to the district uh, after break sometime to start uh, meeting some um, students and principals and, and seeing the schools. So I look forward to um, 
coordinating that date and uh, seeing you in person in a couple weeks. So again, welcome aboard and um, it'll be July 1st be before you know it. So, so uh, I hope you, uh, I wish you a very successful year end in, at your, in your current position. So we can unmute, like, um, I feel like Bob can have a host is muted, so. Well, Sarah, I can hear you. <laughs> I can hear you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Porch, I'm not sure you can hear me. Can you? Yes? All right. All right, we'll see, we'll you, see you in a couple weeks. weeks. And, and it'll be July 1st before you know it is what I said. So uh, uh, finish your current position and uh, we'll, I look forward to working with you. So I'll, I'll connect with you sh in the near future. Beautiful, thank you. Paul, have a great night. Thank you for coming. No worries. Hey, Dr. Conte, moving on. Subcommittee report. Let's see, anybody from the school committee have any subcommittee reports? Martha. Yes, um, uh, there was a Burlington Youth and Family Services Board meeting since our last uh, committee meeting, and we actually uh, talked about an, a, a few issues that are related to the school, so I just wanted to report um, that the, the Youth and Family Services uh, did host uh, four seminars, webinars. Uh, one was on teen depression and suicide, one was on anxiety, one was on parent self-care during COVID and another was on the middle school hybrid learning. They had about 50 people uh, registered for each one of those. And those also are, um, were recorded. So if somebody did have an interest in one of those topics, um, I, I actually had wanted to get to uh, the webinar that uh, Mr. John Madelman gave on anxiety. I've heard a lot of good things about him as a presenter. Um, you can go to the Burlington Youth and Family Services webpage on the Burlington Town webpage, website. Um, although I'm not sure uh, exactly if they're up yet, but they are going to be up. Um, we also spent some time talking about um, integrating and uh, looking at the big picture of social and counseling services in the town. We have a mental health clinic in town, which is called the Burlington Youth and Family Services, and I don't think everyone knows about that. Um, the police department has added um, an addiction specialist and a, a crisis intervention person in the last couple of years. Um, the, public school, the public schools, we've been doing a lot of work on mental health, and we've just this year had some presentations, and uh, we talked about wanting to make sure that everybody keeps the big picture and that we're working together. Um, there's certainly a need for all of the services. We don't, we're not duplicating anything, but trying to make sure that we use the services in the most uh, effective way to help the residents and the, s and the children of Burlington. Um, we also talked about May, uh, which isn't yet, but May is the M Child Mental Health Awareness Month, and um, we got permission to light up the common green so in uh, May, when the common is lit up green, if we can all be aware of the issues of child mental health uh, uh, awareness. And um, one of the statistics that we got brought up was that in order to get a program bed for mental health issues, ha it has doubled since COVID started. Uh, for before COVID, it was a 14-day wait for children to get a bed in a mental health facility. Um, and it is now up to 30 days. We have children waiting for days and days in emergency rooms or in a hospital in order to find treatment that they need. And so these are really important issues that we all are aware of, and yet we need to remind ourselves again. Um, and we also discussed uh, in advance uh, the vigil that was held on the common for Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders in support of them and, and against the hatred that has come up and increased uh, in the last year. Uh, there have been, you all know, numerous uh, episodes and I wanna send my you know, condolences to everybody who's affected by it and on some level we all are. I think that's important for us to remember because we're all connected. So those were, uh, that was a report I wanted to make sure people knew about. Thank you. Thank you. Any other committee, uh, subcommittee reports? Uh, Mr. Chair, just very briefly, we have a, a posted wellness committee meeting Thursday at two that's been canceled. So I just wanna make sure I say that publicly, the wellness committee meeting on 
Thursday at 2 o'clock has been, has been canceled. Okay. Uh, next item is uh, Ways and Means. Roger, do you have anything at this stage? You're waiting for the budget or? Um, nothing um, real high profile. We're looking forward to the rest of the budget discussions this evening. We've got a subcommittee meeting tomorrow at 6 o'clock to vote for the subcommittee to do its votes on the various budgets followed by the Ways and Means meeting at 7 tomorrow. So looking forward to the process wrapping up and uh, really appreciate all the materials that uh, have been passed over to the subcommittee. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Roger. Yeah, sure. Is the Ways and Means meeting on Thursday? Are we supposed to go to it? I uh, Ways and Means tomorrow night is a remote meeting, Roger, I assume? It's, it's a remote meeting and I think it's been, I know it's been posted for Ways and Means. I didn't notice whether it was posted for the school committee. Uh, it has been posted, Roger. Okay, so we're, okay. what's the, um, is it just us and Shashin that's on tomorrow night? On your uh, agenda? Operating the uh, accommodated Shashin, Essex, and Minuteman. Um, we'll do warrant articles another time. Okay. All right, moving on to item seven on the agenda, uh, coronavirus update from the superintendent, elementary and secondary schedules update. Dr. Conti. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. We, um, we are starting our week two of our full day return at the elementary school. Um, I speak with a group of parents regularly and the parents of elementary children after week one said it was they hadn't seen smiles on their children like that in a, in a long time. I think there was uh, positive reviews um, from the kids. I think the kids were tired. I think some of the adults were, were getting their sea legs back in terms of uh, full days. Um, one parent commented that um, her children came home and put their iPads away because they didn't have an afternoon uh, remote lesson and they went outside and played and so she felt um, it was sort of a almost a return to uh, more of a return to normal um, and uh, that it happened seamlessly is a result of a tremendous amount of hard work by our elementary principals and their teachers and staff so I, I just want to make sure I, I commend them um, and so we are now in um, in week two and I think uh, they're saying spring break is coming at a good time. So I'm not sure that's, uh, that's, a, that's a good thing, but I want to make sure I recognize their efforts. And uh, I, I do think uh, the five days that we were had elementary children in school prior to opening full days has really helped the transition go um, as, as smoothly as possible. Um, I do want to get back to um, elementary um, in particular in, in, in one second. The, Middle school, um, the homeroom assignments have been um, distributed and communicated to families and teachers. We did have to um, recreate some homerooms to distribute the kids to maximize social distancing. Um, my understanding is all the students rem remained on their teams but might have a new homeroom um, in order, again, to balance out the, the class sizes. Um, we are prepared and will be starting the full five days a week on Monday, April 26th, so on the Monday returning from, from vacation. Um, that was our slated day for the um, high school as well, but we are pushing the high school until five days later, till May 3rd on the Monday. Um, the numbers at the high school um, had increased uh, significantly. We have about 130 students out as close contacts. Um, most of those are high school students. Um, the majority are, are high school students. Um, and we were concerned. So we wanted to make sure that we um, had a two-week break and that we would look at the numbers and be ready to start again on uh, Monday, May 3rd. Um, all of the decisions have um, benefits and drawbacks. And I think the drawback to the high school is the one that Sarah mentioned is that uh, the seniors will be leaving on uh, their senior inter internships on May 3rd. Um, the benefit to the school will be we'll have fewer students um, in the building and distancing will be improved. But the downside is there will be seniors that have not had the opportunity to go to school with some of their classmates uh, all year. So I, I um, 
the decision wasn't made um, lightly, but I think that we're trying to make the right decisions to maximize the students in person learning. And I think that's something that's gonna happen. Bob is here, the bus routes for the middle school and the high school have to change because we're not busing only half the students on Monday and Tuesday and half the students on Thursday and Friday. So Bob, the bus routes have been um, redesigned and the middle and high school routes are done. And um, we're going to have um, students able to take buses five days a week at the middle and high school level. I just want to say a word of caution though, the state has removed all of the distancing guidelines for school buses, yet the distancing guidelines remain for being in class um, in a mask and for unmasked activities, it's still six feet. Um, so we're gonna have students on buses um, um, we may have students on buses and um, not have the same distancing um, that we're having in school or, or outside of school, um, but recognizing we have to recreate the routes to get both cohorts of students in. So I just wanna remind parents that students have to be masked when they're on the bus. The windows will be open on the bus, so if it's a chilly morning, uh, please make sure your, your Children are dressed uh, appropriately, um, and we are gonna do the best that we can. Um, contact tracing on a school bus is very difficult. Contact tracing in classrooms is very difficult, but it's even more difficult. Um, so that means if we have positive cases on school buses, we may have more students out. My understanding is the State Department of Public Health is reconsidering how they define close contact. So I think that may be a positive change, but right now, even though school social distancing has been reduced to three feet, the contact tracing from the mass, so the three feet is from the Department of Ed, the contact tracing from the mass DPH is still six feet. So for every positive, we're identifying typically twice as many close contacts. So again, the spacing requirements have been eliminated on the bus, but the contact tracing requirements are still the same. So if we have a bus of 45, 50 kids, um, we could have many more students out. So if the goal here is to have students attend in person, we still have lots of conflicting guidelines to manage, and we wanna make sure that we're trying to do that safely. We're seeing an uptick in cases, but still we're seeing a mix of cases coming in from the outside um, and sort of we're watching the cases in school. We have not seen any clusters happening in school. So I know that the precautions, the mitigations that we have in school are working. So getting back to elementary transportation, we said we would look at elementary transportation um, at the end of April because we're re reconfiguring the middle school and high school because we have to. My recommendation is, and we met with all the administrators today, um, as difficult as contact tracing is gonna be for middle school and high school students, at three to a seat at some of our elementary schools, it's gonna be impossible. So my recommendation is going to keep the elementary bus capacity as it is um, for another little while moving forward. And I'm hoping by doing that, we will have elementary students in school more by being cautious on the, on the bus. And I know there may be some feedback or pushback on that, but I feel like that's the best way to keep elementary students in school. I feel like families, I hope, have already arranged their work lives and their daily lives to get their children um, to school. And I just don't wanna disrupt that part of the um, elementary day and have more students on quarantine than we possibly need to. I can't avoid doing that at the middle and high, again, because we're combining the, the cohorts. So um, I know I talked for a while. Um, Patrick, I'm not sure if you wanna add anything. Uh, Patrick was earlier at the Board of Health meeting and, and came in now. Um, but I think that's, that was the gist of our conversation. So again, elementaries are in. I think students are enjoying the full day. Um, we had talked about expanding the bus service. I 
don't, I'm not recommending doing that at the elementary level. Middle school is Monday, April 26th for full days with new bus routes. High school is May 3rd with new bus routes. Okay, uh, Patrick, anything to report from the Board of Health? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to um, say what I said at the Board of Health meeting in regards to the support from Susan Luminello. Um, she's been a great partner in collaborating with us on a daily basis, multiple times daily, um, working with our school nurses, who I also want to highlight their work um, as things have picked up again as well. Um, it's been a lot of hours beyond the school day and on weekends just to make sure that we are making contact with families and kids affected by um, positive cases. So that was that was pretty much, um, again, they were thankful um, and the Board of Health has been very supportive, so we appreciate that. It's made our life a lot easier. Thank you. Questions or comments for either Dr. Conti or Mr. Larkin? Yes. Just a quick question. Eric, um, I heard today that uh, at least at the elementary level, there are some changes in buses. Um, do you know what type of changes, of changes in all routes? I know, all I know is my granddaughter's getting a new bus on Monday. Fox Hill School. Was that because of her behavior, Bob? Is that? <laughs> I, think, I think it might be. <laughs> She's the one that takes the, um, the chocolate bunnies and puts a little hole in the bottom and fills them with ketchup and mustard <coughs> and gives them to her brothers. Um, that explains it. That explains the bus change. Uh, no, I, I just, I got asked today, why is she getting a new bus on Monday? Um, any, any bus changes, oh, I'm sorry, through the chair, no. but any bus changes right now are really just in um, a, a phase for planning. Uh, so while we have new routes, uh, we have not shared any of them publicly. So why would those would have been distributed, I'm not really sure because they're not finalized yet. Uh, they haven't been posted on any websites. Does that and mean she's not getting a new bus on Monday? Correct. Um, no new buses are physically in place yet. We're still in the planning phase of it. Okay, thanks. So. Anything else with respect to Dr. Conte's report? I, I feel like I have to ask this, but I feel like it's like opening, you know, a can of worms. I, I support your decision to not increase the uh, participation on the buses at the elementary level to try to keep our COVID numbers down. But you also referred to three to a seat, and I just wonder if at some point there could be um, two to a seat, you know, or some so that there's 30 kids on a bus, or, you know, I, I don't know what the total number is right now, but maybe if we could double the, if it's one to a seat, could we go to two to a seat, or, you know, is that an option possibly going forward? Um, through the chair, um, again, I'd say anything is possible. You all know it's about $65,000 a year for a bus. Um, we talked today potentially about we, we utilize 18 buses. The middle school uses all 18. Um, High school uses nine, Francis Wyman uses nine, Bob, I should have this memorized by now, uh, Pine Glen, and. So Pine Glen uses five, uh, Fox Hill uses seven, and Memorial uses six buses. So that's how we get the three tiers mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we, we utilize the buses. We have talked because um, there is potential, and I'm gonna say that again, there is potential. We need to survey parents and have the conversation here. Mm -hmm. But if we keep our kindergarten program as a um, full day program where they are dismissed with the first through fifth graders into next fall, mm -hmm. um, we may have some transportation savings that we could potentially add a 19th bus, Ms. Simon, at no cost. So that might be something that we can look at, especially for some of our more high density um, residential areas, um, we may be able to um, alleviate some um, capacity uh, challenges that we have we have on the bus. So again, I, I feel like every time I answer your question, it's if, 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 I but, uh, but I, I do think it's something that mm -hmm. we are looking at and mm -hmm. we are considering. Mm -hmm. um, I just know that we had discussed specifically with this committee about looking at expanding the bus capacity at the elementary level at the end of April because mm -hmm. we were redesigning for middle and mm -hmm. high school. Mm -hmm. And I am, not, I am not making that recommendation right. uh, at this time. 
how many, to chair, if I could uh, follow up, how many students are we allowing on the bus currently at the elementary level per bus? So the current guideline prior to this week would be uh, one per seat, okay. unless you're a family member, right? Uh, and then we could put two in a seat. And there's so there's about 30 kids on a bus now. That, that's a typical okay. average, yes, right. on elementary buses. Right. Okay. Thank you. And again, we also have walking perimeters, which we've not established uh, before. So the walking perimeters were designed um, individually for every school. So um, I think you mentioned at Pine Glen it was point 0.6 miles. What? P point 0.6, 0 point 0.6 miles. So p 0 0.6 miles. So anyone within that radius would be expected to um, walk to school. I think the state regs are a mile and a half or something. So we're being, um, we're being generous. Um, we don't have that walking radius at Marshall Simon. So again, the bus routes that we're designing for the middle school are going to be um, full routes and um, we're not gonna extend that walking radius at the high school. So again, there'll be um, new routes. Um, Bob, when, when are we, we're talking about putting a letter out from my office, I think in the next day or so, and then trying to get the uh, bus routes um, public um, by the end of the week. Is that uh, we're trying or? Uh, my intention is sooner. Um, okay. So if everything is confirmed, I would definitely say before the end of the week, but I'm hoping in the next day or two. And uh, this is like a restart to the year. So you all know it usually takes us a couple weeks to shake out um, bus stops and bus routes. And um, so this is, we're gonna be, it's gonna be a restart and we're gonna have some of that same churn that we have uh, every, every fall. Um, again, I, I would say, and um, I think I mentioned this in my um, connected to parents is one of our concerns is we had, again, I'm gonna say about uh, 25 positive cases at Burlington High School up through last week. And we had uh, almost half that number in only last week. So we were concerned that the numbers were growing. I know the weather is getting better. I know there are many activities that students want to participate in. Um, but it's just a reminder the pandemic isn't over. We're sort of racing against getting people vaccinated and I hope students can be included in that. If they're talking about 16 and over, I think that would include some of our, our high school students. And, um, but I'd still like to um, recommend that um, um, families and students practice uh, precaution and that will allow more flexibility in terms of activities moving uh, moving forward. And so I think that's, um, that's the challenge. So I, I'm, I'm heartbroken for some of the activities that we can't, um, celebrations that we can't typically have or have as, as we typically have, but uh, we will do our best to recognize um, all of their accomplishments as, and as safely as we, as we can. And I know the high school is working very, very hard on that. Okay, thank you. Um, seeing nothing further on that item, we're gonna move on to, uh, and 7D, monthly financial review. Nicole. Thanks. Um, so you have in front of you the monthly financials um, as they're presented each month. Um, for the revolving summary, um, the school lunch, you can see that the deficit has um, increased a little bit over, uh, around 50,000 over the, the prior um, the prior month, um, and then also with um, Sprouts Daycare, that deficit has also increased a little. Um, the reason for this is there was um, three pay periods in the, in the, the last month. And there were three pay periods in the last month um, instead of the two. Um, so with the, the lagging revenues, um, one month in arrears um, is the reason for that there. Um, and then in terms of operating and accommodated, um, the numbers are very consistent with um, the prior month. So if anyone has any questions, I can field them. Nicole, with the before and after school program through the chair, may I ask a question if no one else has a question, Mr. Chair? No, go ahead. Uh, the before and after school program, we kept the hours the same, but um, 
the district is picking up the cost for the first half of the day. So it, that's going to impact the before and after school revolving account. Is that, I'm just trying to, so we, we should see that number coming down. Yes. Um, some. So just for the committee's um, knowledge, we're, we're using our before and after school staff to help manage uh, lunch and recess and some specials. Um, and so we're obviously not charging parents for that time, but our payroll is staying the same. So the district is picking up the cost of that part of the before and after school program. And for the time after school that extends till 4 p.m., then parents are paying for, for that shortened time for after school care. So you should see the um, revolving account. Again, if you see that more expenses in that account, it's because, again, we're, we're utilizing that staff. Any questions? Martha? Um, I was just wondering, um, the elementary summer support staff, the um, deficit got bigger and I'm wondering what we're using that money for if it's not summer yet? Who's here? Um, I'm sorry, it's line uh, 33 on page two of your report. Elementary summer support staff. And it looked like it went from 89,000 to 124,000. Uh, I'd have to look in, into that and I get back to you, Martha. Okay, I mean, what is that? Would that typically be summer staff, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. If you could check on that. Um, and the other thing is line number 21, teacher attendance. Uh, maybe I'm looking at the wrong line. That didn't change, but um, that's my understanding. Is that the, in the uh, every time a teacher takes a day off, they don't get that as an incentive. They don't get that as an incentive. Is that the right line that I'm looking at, or is that a different line? Yes. No, you're correct. So does that mean nobody used up their teacher incentive this month? Uh, or uh, I think you just didn't have the um, all of the the figures to adjust for this month by the time we were running the report. Okay. So the report got run, but there may have been some. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And we have how many months left now? We have May and June, and we have a leeway of seventeen thousand. No. What do we have leeway now? One forty-two. Oh, one hundred and forty-two. Okay. So there's room. Okay. I won't ask you if you're comfortable with that level, but <laughs> it's 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 uh it's a chunk of money. So thank you. Anything further on those reports, Nicole? No. Okay. Thank you, Lee. Thank you. I guess I have a question for Roger. The question well, I'm, I'm sorry, sure. Go ahead, Roger. Um, certainly, the uh, last week before lunch was looking worse. Do we expect any of the money that we were anticipating getting to come in before the end of the year, before the books have to close? Or how much of it? Through the chair. It's yes. So, um, some of the funds were coming from the town's allocation of COVID relief. Um, they have received those funds. Um, we just typically wait until the end of the year to sort of settle this account out, if that makes sense. So the funds are available. We just, we just haven't voted to, um, to make the adjustments for the funding of the deficit. Uh, it's not really a problem, so thanks. Uh, anything uh, else on this on item? Seeing okay. okay, nothing, uh, we'll move on to the school building facilities. Foxhill Statement of Interest, Dr. Conti. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, involvement invited to the, um, oh, sorry, Mr. Chair. Chris, you, <laughs> Ms. <laughs> Ms. Monaco, you uh, are. <laughs> Madam Chair. Uh, what, uh, Madam Chair, how you doing? Uh, whatever. <laughs> I, I apologize. Uh, it's, uh, guess it's getting late. Um, you all have been invited to the uh, Mass School Building Authority. We call it MSBA, the Mass School Building Authority board meeting uh, tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Um, the invitation is a positive uh, step forward. Obviously, um, 
we won't be able to celebrate until the board votes, but um, I think the fact that they are inviting us is a good indication that the project um, will be moving, um, certainly being strongly considered and, and I hope will be moving, uh, moving forward. Um, and um, they may ask for uh, some comments from the community. So again, Mr. Chair, um, I'm assuming they would um, ask you to make those. We've invited um, Senator Friedman, uh, Representative Gordon, we've um, some a board, the chair of the board of selectmen, um, and the town's um, town manager and the assistant town manager to to attend as well. I think we also invited the moderator, so we should have again if people want to attend. The meetings virtually are actually more convenient than driving into Boston and uh, and trying to park and to uh, to attend the meeting um, attend the meeting that way. So. Um, Again, I do think this is a, a positive. I think in my conversations with MSBA prior to this, one of the highlights that they mentioned was the um, video footage that Bob worked really hard to put together, both the, the drone footage and the um, three-dimensional uh, video um, that Bob had done. So Bob, thank you for that. I think they got a very clear picture of the, of the building and, um, and I think that helped uh, that help with the decision. So we're there. I do want to stress um, if the vote is successful tomorrow, um, that's the start of a very structured process. Um, if the state is going to share the cost of this building, um, they control the process. And so it's, it's a very scripted seven year process that uh, the project would be kicked off June 1. So again, if people are hearing, we're going to construct a new elementary school, which I think, again, with a successful vote, we will start on that process. Um, um, this year's kindergartens, kindergarten students will not be there to experience um, that building. So it's just, it's, it's, it's a scripted process. So I think that's what it is. We'll be entering into what's called feasibility. We still have a lot of work to do uh, in terms of um, what the building is, what it would look like. We have to hire a project manager. So there are, again, scripted steps that we need to go through that are dictated by the school building authority. And um, they are great partners to have, and I think we've worked with them before, um, with the Memorial School and with the Marshall Simons uh, renovation in addition. Um, but it is their process, and so there are many times when people might ask you, why does it have to take seven years? Because that's, we want their money, that's the process. If you want the building in two years, then I have to say, then you got to pay for it yourself. So that's the that's the trade-off, and um, and I think that uh, they've they've always treated us um, well. We've had success working with them. So I just want to stress there will be opportunity for people listening if they want to be involved in the process. There'll be opportunities um, to have that involvement, and those opportunities again are usually scripted by the Mass School Building Authority, um, and uh, those opportunities will be in. Um, uh, they would be advisory to the, the school committee um, who would make uh, any decisions that we have um, in regards to this program moving, moving forward. So again, that's tomorrow at 10. We'll make a more of a public announcement after the MSBA uh, board meeting, but um, we have <laughs> eight years of attempt with the uh, high school renovation where we weren't invited to the board meeting, so I'm assuming this is a positive, um, a positive development. I think as I've stated to the committee, I forget whether I wrote to you or spoke to you, is we can have one priority in terms of our statement of interest. Uh, priority this year was for the Fox Hill. Um, if moved forward, we will then go back and have our statement of interest, our priority be the renovation of Burlington High School. So we'll move back towards having that as a priority. Um, the decision on whether there are four elementary schools the size of Fox Hill or three, um, a conversation that we started uh, a year and a half ago. Um, we will now have the opportunity to have that more formally and at some point with feasibility in the design we're going to have to discuss um, again whether Burlington is a three elementary school district or a four elementary school district. So I think MSBA realizes that we need to have that conversation as well. Enrollment projections, as Mr. Murphy will recall, is um, we don't get to use our own enrollment projections. We have to use the enrollment projections that the 
Mass School Building Authority does for our community. So oftentimes there may be a disagreement on the size of the school to build. But again, if you want to have a Mass School Building Authority as your partner, you need to utilize the um, Mass School Building Authority's um, enrollment projections. It's just very important that we give them accurate information about not only the uh, enrollment that we have, but with the housing stock, with the houses changing, with some of the other um, um, building that we're seeing in town that we try to project into the future because this is a, you know, a 40 or 50 year decision. Fox Hill, Bob, was built in what, 1960 from your video? So um, the, the schools need to, they'll, they'll be around for a long time. So I think that's one of the places we are. So um, that's, the, uh, that's the Fox Hill update. Thank you. Questions or comments, Martha? I know that um, Dr. Conti said this tonight and he said it before, but I just want to reiterate that um, if we are voted and accepted at the B MSBA to do the project that we keep calling the Fox Hill project, the decision of what that would look like has not been made yet. The school committee will then, as part of the process, this seven year process, the first step will be for us to make a decision if we want to stay with our four di school elementary districts or if we want to go to a three school elementary districts or what our various options are. So that decision has not been made. We did have a conversation about it a year or so ago, um, but I just wanted to reiterate that because it, people may hear only a little piece of it. Um, and it's hard to understand when we call it the Fox Hill Project. Um, so that will be something we'll discuss in public in the future. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Um, you know, we'll see what happens tomorrow and play it by ear. But um, certainly encouraging. Um, moving forward to item eight on our agenda. Excuse me. Could we also, um, I just wanted to ask on that item, if we could stay sure. in the school building facilities. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Kuna, I just wanted to know if you had any updates from the engineers or architects or whoever is working on the feasibility uh, pr not, I don't know, th what's the name of the report they're working on? That they're looking at the, the high school renovation issues and trying to identify what the problems are and the scope of the problem. So, uh, so the name of the report is the high school feasibility study. Okay. Uh, so similar to what we would do with the MSBA project. Okay. Um, I don't have anything to report okay. back that's new from last, last meeting. Um, so hopefully soon I will. Um, it's just taking a little bit of time. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Communication. Uh, item 8A, capital warrant articles, approval. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I think um, <laughs> we've been voting on, oh, geez. <laughs> I'm looking at Mrs. Monaco. I'm sorry, Mr. Murphy. Again, hey. I will. Keep uh, looking at her. <laughs> I will uh, give her the gavel. Um, um, the capital warrants, um, I think we've talked about um, several of these, but uh, not all of them. So I just want to make sure that um, we look at these tonight. If the committee would at like to ask questions, we can answer questions. I don't think we necessarily need to um, have the vote tonight. I think we were prepared in case they were going to be brought up at Ways and Means, but it sounds like we're going to do capital um, warrants um, at a later date and tomorrow's presentation is just uh, operating and, and accommodating. So Bob, have we presented all of these? I just want to. Through the chair, uh, no we have not. Uh, you have only seen, the committee has only seen the BHS turf and track resurfacing for 725,000 and then the non-capital community custodial article uh, for 47,000. <coughs> So again, we can introduce the others very, very quickly tonight, and then the um, um, the total that we we had from the guideline we had from town, Nicole, was about a million and a half dollars. Is that correct? So you can see we're we're coming in under the million and a half request that that uh, the town had made the the threshold for us to have. So um, I'm sure Bob will answer in more detail than than I can right now, but the um, the second on the list down is the um, insulation and weather stripping for Burlington High School and Marshall Simons Middle School. Um, Bob, you want to just briefly 
So again, why don't you take over and you <laughs> go from the, go from there? So ECM is Energy Control Measure, and this is a project collaboration with the town uh, as part of us being a green community. Uh, so the way they establish their metrics is is that um, if you were to apply for funding or a grant in order to get some of the funding uh, as being a green community member, certain things need to be done to the building first. Uh, so they don't want to put a new boiler in per se if all your windows and doors are leaking. One of the requirements would be is that the weather stripping uh, and insulation uh, is completed. The thing is is that there are caps to the funding that they would approve for each one of these projects. So the middle school and the high school fall above those caps, which is why we're asking for warrant article funding um, in collaboration again with uh, John Sanchez and Rachel Leonardo. We are doing... Um, they are pushing forward on a grant for Memorial, Pine Glen, and Francis Wyman uh, to complete those ECM insulation and weather strips in as well too. So hopefully if we were to get the grant funding and the warrant article, we would be able to complete all five of those buildings in this year. Okay. Uh, do you want me to move on or if yeah. you have some questions? You can move on. Okay. Um, the next one, the Francis Wyman intercom. So three years ago, we did a full fire alarm replacement, and we had intended to put an intercom system in as well. Um, the size of the building and the bids that came back uh, were higher than expected, so we moved forward with the fire alarm only. The fire alarm does have a paging system capability, but does not have two-way capacity. So the existing intercom in the system in the building um, is relative to the renovation back in 96. While it's been functioning, it has been repaired, it is end of life, uh, and we do have a few modules down. Um, we also house um, sprouts in before and after school and some other locations in that building that don't have communication. Um, so now with the new fire system, we can at least make communication to those systems, but again, there's no two-way communication. Parts are scarce for this as well too, again, being an older system, so we've been able to maintain it, um, but it's definitely something that uh, even if we aren't able to do it now, which I believe we should be able to, um, it's definitely something that you'll see continuously as a need for us in that building. Um, the next one is, this request has been coming up lately. Um, so install sanitary products throughout our um, bathrooms system-wide. Um, it's something that we used to have years ago prior to me being in this position well long time ago. Uh, and we have not had any of those dispensers and or the supplies for them. Um, the past couple of years, we've had more and more requests to not only have them in the nursing office, but to have them more available throughout um, the building. So this would actually get us up and going to install these in all six buildings, uh, and then also give us about um, a year's worth of supplies to get going. And the reason I have to say about is um, we can only give a rough calculation. We'll have to obviously, you know, gauge how many we're using uh, and then assess that as we move on. Uh, but we believe that we'll have a, a good start to get us going. Okay. Questions? Hmm? Comments? Yeah. They should have been there all along. We're a little late to the game on this one. Um, Agreed, Mr. Chair. Agreed, <laughs> former Madam Chair. Um, <laughs> but we're 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 uh, trying to rectify the situation. I think in all in all six schools, the town has asked us to prioritize health and safety warrant articles, and so um, I hope you see that there's a health and safety theme with all of our all of our requests. And I think um, we have plenty of other needs, but the reason that we are not putting them forward under under the one and a half. Um, million is we really are trying to prioritize um, our health and safety needs uh, immediately and we were hoping for a positive outcome from the Mass School Building Authority as well and so I, I think it's um, it's not our inability to spend the money as Mr. Sagarino would tell me it's we're just trying to um, be a good partner and follow um, the health and safety priority that they asked us to follow okay uh, in how about the last one, Bob? If I could also oh, I'm sorry, comment. I'm sorry. Um, regarding the sanitary product dispensers, it's also an equity issue, um, and I think that's a really important piece um, to add. Bob. 
Um, again, the last one okay. is um, we've been working on with uh, Ms. Kasha. So, Nicole, do you want to just briefly do the, the last one, which is a non-financial warrant article? Yes. So the, the last one is to establish um, a school accrued liability reserve fund. Um, and basically, we have um, employees that contractually have uh, time on the books that um, upon retirement or separation of service, uh, we would need to pay out. Um, I have been speaking with um, Jim Powers of Powers and Sullivan um, just to sort of get a, a handle on this situation. And um, he recommended a, a best practice would be to set up a, a, a fund such as this um, so that we don't um, jeopardize our operating budget in a given year if we have an influx of um, retirements um, that we needed to pay these out for. And what's the plan for funding it? Um, we're gonna we're working with Darren, and we're gonna work with Mr. Powers to see what sources can be. I think in future operating budgets, you'll see um, a line of funding that goes towards this, and we'll look at other potential um, sources as well. If there's any um, money at the end of the fiscal year, we that this committee could vote to move it into um, to, to that to that account as well. So, I think there are a number of places, but I think the important conversation initially is to ask town meeting permission to set up the account um, again we did speak to um, we had a meeting with Darren this week and um, um, mr. chair it's um, the the town has to approve the um, prove the establishment of the reserve fund but they also have to accept the provision of mass general law as part of the motion so I think I need to um, uh, speak to you about I think the language for the motion is important because they have to concurrently accept is it chapter um, chapter 40 section 13 D chapter 40 section 13 D as well as establish um, as well as establish the uh, the account so we'll we'll have Darren give you the correct yeah. language and he said both can be done concurrently from from his opinion um, and he said it might be that the town had already accepted that provision, but Nicole couldn't find it, and um, and we were checking on that, but I, I'm, I'm not sure the town had, had accepted that provision already. So <coughs> we just have to vote it with that language to approve it to get it on the warrant, or that's what we have to, that's the language we have need for town meeting? That's the language you need for town meeting. It is already on the warrant, but I'm not sure the warrant um, asks for them to accept the provision of the, the the cha chapter, chapter 40 section 13 okay. D as as part mm -hmm. of the as part of the motion so right. I think Darren said we just have to talk to the moderator okay. and make sure the motion includes both the 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 law and the chapter and and the account at the same time so we'll okay. we'll I'll clarify that uh, okay. we're okay. going to be we have to formally vote these sometime prior to town meeting anyway right, right. yes can we put that language in there in that during that for that vote does that cover us or it's already in the warrant so so it's already in the warrant um, without the without the chapter without address. the um, the acceptance of it okay um, but so I, I, th I think what Darren said is like it may by them passing this it may be that they're also adopting it um, like those the provisions of the law but just to make it more clear um, so that there's okay. no We're going to have a, count, a conversation it. with town council ahead of meeting or ahead of town yeah. meeting and we'll, yeah. we'll include you in that conversation. I just want to make sure that um, we, the motion is correct at town meeting right. so it doesn't get. And we can get somebody to amend it on the floor if necessary, if there's language that has to be added. Yeah, but I'm saying that's the one, that's the one sort of technical piece with this, okay. with this article. All right, well, with respect to the other ones, um, I don't know if Roger's still on the call. Uh, our next meeting is not until two weeks from now. If they're going to be taking up the warrant articles prior to then, we might want to be voting these tonight. Yeah. Um, Nicole, I'm looking at, I don't know when Ways and, did Ways and Means get us a warrant schedule? I don't think that they've set it up for that. I don't, again, I don't think they've set it yet. Uh, you're, Again, you're welcome to vote. I think we're under the number. If you mm -hmm. want to be proactive and do that, we need to um, check here to, to vote it. So, uh, do you do you still have the warrant article voting through the chair? 
I, I, oh, uh, Roger, yes, go ahead. Uh, Steve probably has the real answer here. I think he's got a couple of weeks lined up in the late part of May, right, Steve? Yeah, so there's essentially, uh, I think, three Wednesdays after tomorrow before town meeting. We have the school vacation week, which is typically a week that Ways and Means doesn't meet. And then we have two weeks, the 28th, and then I think 5-3, and then Mount, uh, uh, or 5-5, five, five, and then uh, town, uh, town meeting starts on 5-10. So uh, we intend to meet on uh, 4 and the first Wednesday of five, well, first Wednesday of May, which would be 5-5. So I think if you're meeting the, the in two weeks, then the school articles could go on the 5-5 the five, five agenda for Ways and Means. Thanks, Steve. Maybe, Maybe why don't we then plan, plan to vote them vote next them. time just to make sure whatever language we need is, is, yeah, is all written out. Yeah. yeah, so if, you, if you've already put the, these items on the, um, on the warrants, if we can get copies of whatever that language is for each, for each one, we'll just read that as our motion to approve at the next meeting. Just include it in the next agenda. Yeah, yeah so that'll be on our next agenda. Anything else on the capital warrants or the articles? Seeing none, uh, item 8B, 2021-22 teacher's school calendar, first reading. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, again, it's a, it's a first reading, so school committee should take this under consideration. I just want to point out a few things to the, to the committee is that um, Labor Day is um, late again. So um, in working with the teachers union, they enjoyed having the professional development days spread out throughout the year. So if you look at the calendar and you see the blue days, we still are having two professional development days in January, two professional development days in March. Um, that brings basically our first day for grades one through 12 is going to be on Monday, August 30th, which is prior to Labor Day. Um, and then our preschool and kindergarten students um, normally would start on the Tuesday after Labor Day or a week later on the 7th, but we were pushing that start until uh, September 9th um, because we have the um, Jewish holiday um, at the very start of the year. So um, again, um, recognizing that we will start uh, the kindergarten students and preschool students on, um, all together on September 9th. So we'll, we, we will do that. Uh, first day for teachers we have as August um, 26th. We have a setup day and a professional development day on the, on the 27th. Um, again, parent-teacher conference days are, are, are going to be communicated. I think the, um, the holidays are there. Um, November is always a tough month. We chose the 8th so we could have two five-day weeks in November because the other weeks are are broken up because of um, uh, Veterans Day and Thanksgiving and um, other than that it's relatively straightforward we have the last day of school as being June 16th we still built in um, five snow days I'm not sure the state is going to allow any remote uh, teaching during snow days and I'm getting back to our normal routine the school committee would need to vote that anyway mm -hmm. and so if you don't vote to support that we would have to make days available for snow um, there's also a new mass state holiday which is um, something where we need to incorporate uh, associated with Juneteenth so um, we're, we're still figuring out how that holiday is going to be um, celebrated from a human resource perspective please is all I'm saying um, and so we need to figure out whether if it's um, if it falls on a Saturday, is it celebrated on the Friday? And if it falls on the Sunday, is it celebrated on the Monday? That's, that's the only thing I'm talking about in terms of we have to, we have to figure that out. But if that's a non-school day, a non-work day, then that would, we, again, we, that we would push, um, that would be a holiday, so we'd have to, that wouldn't count as a school day for us. So that would be something that we need to, um, um, need to consider. So again, it's first reading. So if anyone has any questions, you have the calendar and the backup. And just for people listening, uh, 
first day of school is on August 30th, which is before Labor Day, but the Friday of that week is no school day? Correct. So that's a four-day week, and then that's for grades 1 through 12, and the first day of school for preschool and for kindergarten is Thursday, September 9th. Okay. Christine. This strikes me that I'm curious why September 9th. It seems a little late for the kindergarten and preschool. I would think that they would have had them started there at least earlier. Uh, the Jewish holiday is on the 7th and 8th, and so we just want everyone to start on the same day, and it just makes sense to start after the Jewish holiday. But the, the other kids will be in school, right? No. Oh, the, yes. You mean the first through 12th grade? The, the first through 12th graders will be yeah. there, and again, uh, they can attend or not attend on, the, on those religious days. I honestly just didn't want the first day of school to have the students make that choice. And I just think it's okay. important that they all start, they all start together. Um, if we were starting the, the, you know, the, the kindergarten students the week before, then that, I, that would be fine. But uh, I just didn't want the first day to be uh, is there, separate. Is there a reason we can't start them the week before? Um, we've always had a week um, difference between the- I the know, but why? Um, I think there's orientation, there are other activities that happen. I think they bring the students in in small groups. And for next fall, Patrick, I think we, um, we're not doing kindergarten screening um, this spring as we normally would. So I think we're gonna do a fall screening which is gonna take place um, between August 30th and September 9th. So um, again, I, I can't answer your question completely well other than we typically bring the kids, the students in in small groups during that first week um, at the kindergarten level. Just a thought to future calendars. I have always wondered why we didn't just start them either the same day or the next day. So I've wondered that for years. Maybe, maybe I'm missing something, but I wonder if we might make a change in the future. Um, again, Mrs. Monaco, I, I think what I acknowledged is the expansion of the kindergarten program was not done thoughtfully um, currently. I think we had just some logistical issues that we needed to solve. Um, and what we committed to is surveying parents in May to see if they want to maintain the, mm -hmm. the full day. And then we committed to putting together a team of people and to do a thoughtful um, program expansion um, of kindergarten over the summer. So um, in terms of um, including specials, the length of specials, um, again, what the schedule is gonna be, and um, we could also talk about the, the start date when we do the sort of the more thoughtful conversation. Our kindergarten program has been in place, I saw a curriculum guide from 1977. <laughs> I think, uh, uh, I, I don't think our, the, the content has been from 1977, but I think the structure has been in place for, for a long time, um, I, th I think. So um, we, we just need to have a more thoughtful conversation. We'll invite kindergarten teachers into that conversation, uh, Patrick, and uh, the curriculum office will facilitate that, and then we'll have obviously principals and, and we'll get some feedback from parents as well, so. Just my two cents. I think that it'd <coughs> be nice if all the kids went on their first day together. Okay, we'll add that. Not a big deal, it's just a thought. Martha? Um, I, I wanted to just comment on um, moving the professional development days into the school year. Um, I know for a number of years we've had three days before the school for professional development, the, and I think it, there's been a lot of value to that. But I also do believe that professional development is uh, been shown to be the most effective if it's spread out throughout a school year. So I, com I very much support this. Sounds like you also were getting uh, input from the teachers as well. And looking at this, I understand that there are issues with um, holidays and all that, but I also feel like we've kind of super loaded it to like January and March. And I would love to have you discuss with the teachers if moving one of those January or March days, say, into October, or I, I know there are issues in November, but um, there aren't any PD days in October, and I think getting pe professional, especially if these are gonna be ongoing, 
and people are going to be working on projects to um, go from August to November is a long time to get programs going in a school year. And I, I do know that there's an awful lot of initiatives that we ask our teachers to do. Um, and I think that if we're going to move the professional development days into the year, I'd love to see one of those days from either January or March, say, moved into October. So maybe you can continue to have that conversation. Sure, we can bring that up with the Joint Labor Management Great. Council. Great, thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, just um, um, Deb Clark happens to be uh, participating this evening, and I know Mrs. Monaco's comments were directed towards uh, K only, but uh, and preschool. And preschool, but I think uh, Ms. Clark. Especially K. Yeah, especially K, but Ms. Clark wanted to um, just discuss the importance of that week. So, um, Deb, can you jump on? Hi, Deb. Yes, yes. Hi, everyone. No, um, so, no, I just wanted to comment on the reason, reasoning behind us starting later and kindergarten starting later. It's probably more for the preschool. Um, I don't want to step on any kindergartners' toes, but. Um, you know, those weeks or that week before, um, while grades one and 12 are in, we're using that time, um, like Dr. Conte said, to catch up on any um, kindergarten screenings that weren't done. Um, this year, it's a different year, but usually we'll do the kindergarten screening. We'll also do early intervention evaluations at the preschool and get those done so we can get kids in who are eligible by their third birthday. Um, there's a lot of, you know, especially at the early elementary and preschool, there's a lot of materials prep. And you know, certainly teachers are coming in to um, even before school starts to set up and do that. But the amount of prep um, materials and everything that are needed to start the year, it's just, it's insurmountable. Um, you know, you've got many people working on that. The other thing is we have the um, open house for all of our families to come in at different times. So they do a tour and then for students um, who've never been to school, we will have them come in maybe on a separate day. So there's a lot of prep um, for that, and that's why we have those extra days to build in for our students to come in. Thanks, Deb. Um, Mr. Chair? Nothing. Um, I also wanted to, um, again, reiterate what Dr. Conte said about kindergarten screening, because I have actually gotten some questions from parents. When's kindergarten screening? When's kindergarten screening? And uh, Dr. Conte just explained that it will be uh, from August 30th to September 9th, there will be the doing this, the kindergarten screening this year. So if parents were wondering, that's uh, when it's going to be happening. And will that information be going out to our registered families soon or? Um, yes, okay. we will be communicating that out. And I have some other information for the committee, but uh, Great. Thank you. Uh, we can do that after the budget. Thank you. Sure. Eric, the screening that you're doing that late in the game is for what purpose? Um, I'm going to have to ask Deb to jump back on the call again. Um, oh. I think it's a basic. Um, Deb, I'm sorry, Ms. Clark. The, the what's the purpose of the kindergarten screening? It, when it's done late like that. Uh, we, the kindergarten screening is part of Child Find. Um, the school systems are responsible to screen um, our children. Um, years ago, we did it in the fall, um, and we moved to the spring. It, it can be done fall or spring. There's no mandate of when it needs to be done. Um, I think when we did it in the fall, it was teachers didn't like to be out of their classrooms at the beginning to do it. That's why we moved it to the spring. Um, but you can do it either in the fall or in the spring. So, so when COVID's no longer an issue, it would go back to the spring. I mean, that would be up to elementary and everything, but that would be, I think that's the best because you get a picture of the kids who are coming in, you have more time to use, look at that data, analyze it, um, and see where we are on that. I think that would be ideal. So hopefully we do get back to that. We, we, just, don't, we just don't want more people in the building. Yeah, and the screener here and, uh, and, uh, Deb, there are different screeners for four-year-olds and five-year-olds. Isn't that correct? There's a different screener for spring than there is for fall? So we use the Brigance screener, so if we were screening in the spring, we have two different booklets that we would use, and the each elementary would have the different ones. Um, if we're doing it in the fall, almost all of our children, or all of them, will be five by the time we're screening because of the um, kindergarten age. So um, we would just use the um, five-year-old kits for that. So it's just, it's a uh, combination of having enough kits and all of that as well. Thank you. Anything further on that? 
Seeing nothing, um, we're going to move on to the uh, fiscal 22 draft budget. Um, now, if I understand, we're going to talk about wrapping up the budget presentation, and then after we're done, we're going to do the annual public hearing. Is that the plan? Okay. Yes, Mr. Chair. All righty. Uh, Nicole or Dr. Conti, whoever's... Thank you. Uh, so for operating budget, we have um, just three, um, three budgets left. Um, line 41 um, curriculum, line 56 health services, and line 64 um, sped operating. Um, for curriculum, um, there's only a $30 increase, um, which was just due to um, a subscription um, increase renewal for next year. Um, for health services, um, it appears that there's a $13,660 increase, but this is actually um, just reinstating what was cut from um, the budget this year at September town meeting, uh, which was um, costs associated with the vision and hearing screenings that were waived for this year. Um, so adding that, that 13 grand back um, is level funding them, um, and then sped operating, which was a zero percent increase. All right. Um, does anybody have any questions or comments on those three items of the budget? No. Patrick. So I know. Um, I think Barbara Conley is on the call, and I know she just wanted. She doesn't have a presentation, but she just wanted to make a brief comment about the health budget, if that's okay, through sure. the chair. I don't have any comments about the budget itself, but because um, I, I don't see any increase, big major increases for next year unless we need PPE that's not covered by um, grants. But I do want to take this opportunity to thank the school committee for everything that they've done to support the school district in opening the district. I want to thank the Board of Health, uh, Susan Luminell and Christine Pollock for all their support in helping with contact tracing and supporting our protocol development this year. Um, I would like to thank all the school nurses for their outstanding efforts this year, working 24 seven, um, meeting the needs of the full community. And lastly, I would like to thank my co-pilot Patrick Larkin. I honestly don't know what I would do without him this year. He has been my sounding board and my support. Um, so I just wanted to acknowledge um, everybody's support. Thank you, Barbara. Mr. Chair, um, we also have Mary Hood here for the, um, we haven't done accommodated yet, but for the SPED operating. Mary, are you with us? Yeah. Hi, Mary. Mary. I so I yes. want to make sure before you start, Mary, that I, uh, for the committee and for me, thank Mary for her service in Burlington. Um, sadly, Mary is uh, retiring. She's leaving us uh, this June. Um, so um, I just can't uh, thank her enough for, for uh, all of her work over the last uh, several years. I'm so happy that our career paths crossed um, and I had the opportunity to learn from Mary and to um, and to work with her, and so it's been uh, thoroughly uh, enjoyable. And I think that's the saying: is uh, just try to leave places better than you found them. And I think um, Mary has has done that in, in Burlington. So, again, mm -hmm. Mary, with that, uh, if you want to make a operating budget uh, comment, well, I will thank you your comments, and I will thank the school committee for always supporting the special education budget and the programs that we have in the district. Um, I felt very supported for the past three years in managing the budget and Nicole has been absolutely wonderful teaching me things that I didn't know about the budget and helping me get through that. So thank you, Nicole. Um, we, it's, we didn't ask for any increases this year and um, we've done well in COVID to stay within the budget limits and still provide services to our special education students and have them in, in school consistently all year. And I thank you all for that. 
Barry, the, the one uh, position, if you had to prioritize, I know was, a, was that a school psychologist at Marshall Simons Middle School? Is that uh, from the middle school presentation? I just want to keep that in front and center of the school committee's um, mind. And that would also provide you some teen chair support at the middle school as well, is that correct? programming support at the middle school. So the, that, that would be my priority. Um, and the other piece that was requested, I believe, is another special education teacher at Pine Glen. And if there was an opportunity to open for that to happen, that would be important as well. So again, uh, we, we have some federal money, federal money to consider uh, this. And I just wanted to make sure that you heard from Mary uh, her, her priorities. So again, I think that school psychologist at the middle school is going to be important for us and then we'll try to figure out some scheduling at, at Pine Glen. Thank you. Chris? Mary, don't go away yet. We really don't want you to leave. Thank you. The CPAC parents um, don't want you to leave. I don't want you to leave. The rest of the board doesn't want you to leave. So we're feeling a little blue about you leaving. But we wish you the best. Thank you, Chris. And thanks for all the support the past three years. It's been great. And, and really, you guys are a wonderful school committee for supporting our special education students. I also want to thank you, Mary, uh, for all that you've given to the district in the years you were here. And I am very sad that you're leaving, but I really wish you a good next uh, next stage of your life. So look, I don't know if you can see the smile, but under the mask, yeah. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? Um, thanks very much, Mary. Um, Nicole, budget wrap up. Yeah, so for um, the operating budget, um, if you look on the bottom of page four, um, we were aiming to a 3.5% um, a guideline. Um, so the, the current budget shows um, $3,769 um, increase ov over that 3.5%. Um, um, so in order to come in at the 3.5, um, we could make um, those cuts in the guidance um, budget as they were um, one of the only departments to have um, an increase um, of that size that would be able to cut from. Um. Can you explain that again? Yeah, you so uh, let me, let me, um, and I think we have Roger uh, on the call as well. So the guideline was 3.5%, Ms. Simon, we're coming in at 3.51. The difference is uh, the $3,700, so we can, certainly make that reduction in one of the lines. Um, I, for one, don't mind coming in at 3.51, but uh, um, I'm not sure the optics of that, but um, I think we've done very well to come in where we're, where we are, where we're coming in. Um, and we have two outstanding contracts that we're trying to settle. So whether it's 3.51 or some other number, I think that it's really not gonna be firmed up until we um, have, that, have that information. So. Um, again, Roger, it, it's, it's your call. Do you want us to present at 3.5 or 3.51? I agree that it sort of partly seems percentage-wise much to quibble over, but I think it looks better if it's a nice round 3.5 as uh, requested. So, I, again, what I would tell the committee is um, that number is as real as it's going to be until we settle uh, until we settle the contract. So, um, so I, again, we can make it 3.5 as Nicole said and come in at a at a clean 3. Point, uh, um, at a 3.5, which would be again a $3,700 and and 69 dollar reduction in is it the high school guidance budget? Yes, line 51. So. Line 51. So that's where we would make is the, the um, Are the numbers in the uh, agenda, Nicole, with that 3,700 in it or with that 3,700 taken out of it? Taken out. Taken okay. out. So that Thank number you. we're looking at is would be the exactly 3.5. Correct. Thank you. Can you open the budget here and we'll close it? Um, yeah, first we'll 
Okay, so the, is that the end of the the, the budget wrap up? For operating, we, we still have accommodated. Okay, um, but the, okay, yeah, so why don't you do the accommodated? Okay, um, so for accommodated, which is, uh, was sent out as a separate document and also on our, our, our website, um, we actually have a reduction um, in accommodated this year of $281,000. $683. Um, we had um, a number of students um, that either aged out or moved out, um, and this reflects the reduction of those uh, tuition costs. Uh, again, Mr. Chair, excuse me, we have um, our preschool program, Burlington Early Education, the, our early childhood. Uh, center is in, in the accommodated account. I know we have, um, you've already talked to Ms. Clark, but I want to give her a chance to, to comment. And then um, if Mary wants to make any comments on the accommodated account, we'd love to hear from Mary again one more time. So Deb, are you there? Yes. Um, so we didn't make any, um, for our budget this year, we didn't make any um, changes or increases for that, um, for our staffing, at the beginning of the year, we kind of kept some staffing at bay because our numbers were a little bit low to start off with. So I think we saved some money for the budget for that um, going into this time. Um, we are picking up with our referrals. So staff, we have hired some new staff recently to cover those new students' um, tuition this year. Um, I worked with Nicole on that and Dr. Conti because we have our hybrid model, we reduced tuition this year and we didn't have an afternoon program. So some of our tuition funds um, are, low, are obviously lower this year, um, but we will be going back to our standard tuition with a slight increase from previous years next year. And um, we will be having our afternoon sessions as well. So um, the tuition that we'll be bringing in will be increased from what it was this year. We had one conversation, you mentioned there were some challenges with uh, EI early intervention um, during COVID and you may have more students um, next year or there may be a backlog. Did, did I understand that correctly? Yeah, so, I mean, it's not just a Burlington um, issue. It is an issue with all um, the preschools in, in the state, in the area that I'm in a group with. Um, early intervention is working um, remotely. Um, I believe they'll con they've worked remotely since the shutdown and they will continue to work remotely um, until the summer. So we're getting more and more students who haven't um, you know, gone to the EI play groups or some of the music groups or community groups or had interactions with students. So we are getting some students who haven't had that, um, those home visits, that one-on-one -on -one, um, work with therapists. So we are finding some students who are in need of more services than we usually, our, our numbers are a little higher with some of our more um, more involved students. So we are getting those numbers in. And leave that open. But uh, EI, early intervention, do you need uh, it? Early intervention is for um, birth to three years old. Um, when students are about two and a half, we get a referral from early intervention um, for students to be um, evaluated to see if they qualify um, for special education services by having a disability in one of the areas of um, what the, uh, Massachusetts states. It could be communication, it could be autism, it could be a developmental delay. So we evaluate them to see if they are eligible for special education. If they are eligible, they're put on an IEP and um, they're provided services. So just under half of our students are um, students who have some um, special education need, and then um, just over 50% of our students are students who are our neighborhood students who are general ed students, and those are the students who pay tuition. We're good, we're good. We're good. David Chair, I want to thank the school committee, administration for all their support. Custodial has been wonderful for us, and um, you know, our families have been fantastic you know, working with us, um, you know, following guidelines, you know, getting three-year-olds and four-year-olds to wear masks is not an easy feat, but we've had great, great compliance and work with families and our staff has really worked well on that and it's been a true team effort. So um, on behalf of the preschool staff, we wanna thank all of you for your support. And right. Mary, any uh, comments on the accommodated? Um, 
being negative, I just want to warn you that um, the out-of-district tuitions tend to be a moving target. And so while I'm absolutely thrilled to see that they're down this year, um, there is an ebb and flow that occurs um, when you have a cluster of students who, um, you know, reach the age where they're no longer eligible for services. We also have years where we have a number become eligible So that number, I just want to be a tiny bit pessimistic warn people that it will fluctuate. This is why you guys, how many of you count? Yeah, you all know. <laughs> so again, Mary, uh, thank you again. We will, the next time will be a roast. So we're, <laughs> we're going to be roasting you next. So, uh, but uh, uh, thank you for making time tonight. <laughs> thank you. Nicole, you said you, you accommodated went down. What was, what was the accommodated guideline this year? Was it? Uh, I'm I'm not I'm actually not sure on that. Well, we <laughs> didn't we didn't really get an accommodated guideline okay. um, this year. We I mean, years past, it's generally been larger than the operating budget guideline. Yes. Usually about five percent, I think. Right. It, but it, and then it, and it's gone down by how much? The budget. Um, two hundred eighty-one thousand six hundred eighty-three dollars, or two point two percent. You know, not to nitpick over the thirty-seven hundred, but if you combined our total guidelines, we're still coming in under. I, 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 I again, I understand, and it's a budget <laughs> number, and and again, with unsettled contracts, we no. still um, okay. the the number not as it certainly has meaning, but I think it's it's still in flux. I think another important question, and again, to Nicole's credit, is she's been managing circuit breaker uh, very well, so the the accommodated account at the 2.2% is with circuit breaker budgeted at 65% at 65%. So she's been able to budget in some of that conservative um, nature of that. So if we get more than 65% of circuit breaker, then uh, that percentage would go down even further. And then also remember that with the student opportunity act, uh, the state is committed to on a gradually increasing basis to fund provide funding or allow circuit breaker to be used for out of district transportation. So um, that's, that's a new uh, reimbursement that we can seek. And if, if funded, I always have to say, if funded from the state, they're gonna start at 25%, mm -hmm. then go to 50%. And then, um, so in the next two, say two to three years, we would be able to um, get circuit breaker reimbursement for our out of district transportation. Again, which will also help the accommodated account um, expenditures. All right, if there's nothing further on the budget wrap up, uh, the chair will entertain a motion to, uh, just as background, uh, state law requires us to have a public hearing on our budget every year prior to town meeting. So um, tonight, uh, the public hearing is on our agenda. So the chair will entertain a motion to open the public hearing on the um, fiscal year 22. Uh, so moved. Agenda. Moved and? Second. Seconded. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Five zero zero. And the public hearing on the fiscal 22 school budget is now open. Um, if anybody from the school committee wants to comment or, or um, ask questions, uh, I'll let the committee speak first. And then if there's anybody in the audience who wants to speak, I'll recognize them afterwards. Christine. No, I got no comments. Oh. Martha. Martha. Um, yeah, I, I've asked my specific questions, but I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Conti and Ms. Kasha for the hard work. Um, this is a difficult year financially. There have been all these additional considerations regarding the, fi uh, the federal money, the ESSA and the rescue, and making you've, you've done a really excellent job incorporating that into the budget and into the budget planning and I want to thank you and I am sorry that we have to have a 3.5 budget guideline but I understand you know that everybody is short short you know and the town is short um, so I I just want to thank everybody for the hard work that went into this budget thank you thank you anybody else Carl you're good Ms. Martha and anything okay Bob um, Anybody in the audience appear 
uh, raising your hand to be heard in the public hearing. Yes, Beth Colburn has her hand raised. Okay. Um, Beth, if you're on, would you like to address the school committee and state your name? Yes, please. My name is Beth Colburn. I'm a board member of the CPAC, and I'm also a parent of three children in the district. Um, I just wanted to say thank you, everyone, for all their efforts with the budget. It's a horrible job, um, and I don't want it. I'm so glad you are doing it, not me. But I just wanted to also, and, and as a numbers person myself, um, financial is super important, looking at the numbers, balancing your budget. But as a parent, I just wanted to also give you that one last reminder that this money is being spent on tiny humans, developing adults, future leaders. Um, and so these are certainly difficult decisions, but remember that this money is going to something super important, one of the most important things um, in our community. Um, and to keep that in mind when you're making some of these difficult decisions. Oh, and also, um, I'm also incredibly devastated that Mary Hood is leaving. Um, I'm barely able to cope. Um, and um, I agree with everything everyone else has said. We will truly miss her. <laughs> Thank you, Beth. Rob, anybody else out there indicating? Nope, no one else has a hand raised. Okay. Uh, if there's nobody else with any comments, uh, Chair will entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes 5-0 when the public hearing is now closed. Now we have to move on to vote our budget, which will be presented to town meeting. Uh, this requires three separate motions, one for the salary account, one for the non-salary account, and then one for the total operating budget. Um, so the chair will entertain a motion uh, for the fiscal 22 school budget salary account. I move that we approve the fiscal 22 school budget salary account at the amount of 49629632 dollars. Do a second. I'll second that. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on the salary account budget? As proposed. Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The chair abstains. That's a 4 1 0 vote. Uh, we'll now move on to a, a, a motion for the non salary account. I move that the committee approve the non salary account for the FY22 school budget in the amount of $7,507,479. I second that. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Um, and that's a 5 0 uh, unanimous vote on the non salary account. And we'll now entertain a motion for the total operating budget. I move that the school committee approve the FY22 school budget, total operating budget, in the amount of 57 million. <coughs> $137,111. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Um, any discussion? Uh, Chair will put the motion to a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that also is 500. So that adopts the fiscal 22 school operating budget. Uh, next, move on to the special education accommodated uh, account budget. Uh, is there a motion? I move that the school committee approve the special education accommodated account budget in the amount of $12,333,456. Second that. Moved and seconded. Seeing no discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 5 0 0 and that's approved. Um, we're on the Ways and Means agenda for tomorrow night, right, Roger? Seven o'clock? Yes, seven o'clock. So anybody who wants to join that call, uh, we posted it to the school committee. Do we have a link, Roger? I think there's one out there. Yeah, we can get it through to us. Um, and, uh, moving forward, uh, we want to thank the committee. Uh, basically, that vote marks this becoming uh, transferring from a district budget to a school committee budget. So moving forward, this is a, this is a school committee's budget and will be represented as such. So uh, thank you uh, for getting that done. 
Mr. Chair, um, we just got some information, I think it was uh, today, that I just wanted to um, uh, pass along to the, uh, to the to the committee. It's something we're watching closely. I think Patrick can um, help me as well. So if you look, again, uh, and if you could pass the packet along, I think I have enough for everybody. don't have enough for anyone I can um, yeah we're good Bob can you just run one over that'd be great I'm sorry I, I counted wrong Mr. Foss I would fail my handing out papers uh, <laughs> that's right so I'll go from there um, enrollment is a really important part of budgeting as you all know program and enrollment drive staffing class sizes are a critical part of budgeting this year has been uh, a challenge for us just because of the amount of uh, fluctuations that we've had. So I just wanted to give you sort of an early warning sign maybe. Um, if the front page that you're looking at, if you top left, it says projected enrollment May of 2020. So this was May of last year. And if you look at your kindergarten, uh, Fox Hill at 74, Memorial 52, Pine Glen 35, Francis Wyman 80. Does everyone see the page I'm looking at? Typically when we would build a budget then we would look at last year, we do, we move all the cohorts up. So K would become one, one would become two. Um, we would factor in some, some mobility, but I think it gives us a generally a decent idea of what our class sizes are gonna be and then what our programs are gonna be. If you look at uh, the information that we got, I think it was yesterday, Patrick, um, from Robin, um, and you look at uh, April of 2021, so this month, um, you can see that, um, and you can separate the sheets if you need to, but um, our K numbers are up at, um, at Fox Hill, um, they're up at Memorial, they're up at Pine Glen, and um, Francis Wyman is always an outlier. They have uh, lots of late regist registrations, so um, um, again, the Francis Wyman number is, is always the least, the least accurate for us in the spring. Um, we get, again, a lot of families come in um, during, during the summer for Francis Wyman. So um, you can already see that um, um, we have some potential class size challenges. Um, I just wanted to highlight some parents needed the uh, full day experiences during COVID. So we had, um, we, that we're aware of, we have about 28 um, students in private, in private K and we have about 33 students in uh, being homeschooled uh, grades K to four, which is about three times our normal um, um, number of homeschool students. We're reaching out to those families. We're seeing which families may wanna repeat K in the public school setting, which families wanna return their children if we go back to full-time education in the fall. Um, but it's quite possible that at a school like Fox Hill, we could end up with um, more than 20 kindergarten students um, per class. And I know this committee gets um, upset. Um, Mrs. Monaco, um, I'm channeling your anger already. Um, um, it's but stress, not anger. Stress, not anger. So um, uh, where the, so staffing is a limiting factor in, in these, in this sort of challenge, but space is also a factor in this challenge. So we're, we're running out of classrooms and so, um, again, Patrick and I are looking at uh, classroom numbers, whether specialists need to stay on a cart. Um, so we, we are starting to see an enrollment, um, some enrollment growth at the, at the early elementary. And again, this year in particular has been um, a real challenge for us to, um, to predict. So I think we'll, we'll continue to watch it and um, we'll give regular, regular updates. Um, Typically, I'm not sure typically is the right word. Uh, traditionally, maybe even not sure that's the right word. Um, in prior budget years, Mr. Chair, um, we've always been able to add positions outside of the guideline if they're enrollment driven, um, depending on the situation that we find ourselves in, um, depending on the federal relief that we get. It may be that if we can find space, we may come back to the committee to ask for um, some additional staffing for some class size uh, relief. Um, I am, we have redistricted in the past, um, but as you can see, there's not a school that necessarily is um, far below where they were. So um, if we have 
roughly 16 kindergarten classrooms across the district. I can't necessarily take kids from one part of town and move them in into uh, another. We've done that in the past, but it doesn't make sense to redistrict frequently because it just, um, it causes more disruption than it's worth. So um, we're not in uh, DEFCON 5 or the, the sirens aren't going off yet, but I do think um, it's something that we need to watch closely and um, we'll need to probably keep track of it all throughout the, the summertime is, is what I think we're gonna have to watch. And uh, I know that I have, again, my conversations with parents, elementary class size is, is a priority for them and I know that they have some, uh, they have some concern. So, um, all right, keep an eye on it, I guess. Um, anything else to come before the board this evening? Old business, questions? Um, I just, you know, I don't want to take all the credit, but I just can't help notice that I've been the chair for two hours. We've built a new school, hired a diversity <laughs> instructor, <laughs> and passed a $57 million budget. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do today, Dr. Conti? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've had an incredibly productive first meeting, Mr. Thank Chair. You, thank you. Um, if there's nothing further, the Chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. And we are adjourned. Again, thank you. <laughs>